whether it's true or not, um, about how you treat it. And you can't really rate our weekend, however you were treated yesterday. Um, you know, we are so grateful. Um, thank you. under a rock you would have seen recently that there was a comic con that was at the weekend called London Film and Comic Con or LFCC and if you are in the Stranger Things community, the cosplay community or to be honest at this point just anyone you may have heard of the shambles that was the organization of this con. There have been lots of things thrown around that were apparently said to Joseph Quinn who plays Eddie Munson from Stranger Things and just in general the way people were treated by the staff at the con. I had a great time with my friends and I really enjoyed it and I obviously really enjoyed meeting David Harbour but there was so many things about this con which I just wasn't too happy with. Let me just preface this video by saying I don't really believe that it's fair to tar every single volunteer at this con under the same brush. Not everyone is the same. A lot of the time you're going to remember a really really horrible experience compared to just a normal experience so I think that is also something to remember. However the sheer amount of people's awful experiences with this con is something that I think needs to just be talked about. I'm sharing this video from the perspective of a very long time cosplayer who is an avid fan of comic cons and different cosplaying conventions. I just wanted to put this out there so Showmasters and LFCC and all of the other cons as well can just see how their organisation and how their planning affects the consumers. I strongly believe that they see everything from a making money business standpoint and not from an attendee standpoint which is what I want to bring in this video. If they're unaware of the problems they can't change it, if they don't know what's going on they can't do anything about it so I think by just not saying anything I am doing a disservice not only to everyone that attended but also to them. I'm gonna start this video by going through my experience with the con and then going through the things that people have sent forwards to me about their experience with the con and just some things that I've seen online. So without further ado, let's start. So my main purpose for attending this con was to meet David Harbour. Oh my gosh. David Harbour is one of my favourite actors probably of all time very up there with Alan Rickman. I really really like David Harbour and so when I heard that he was going to be at this con I freaked out. Darren is also a really big fan of David Harbour and he actually bought me the Diamond Pass ticket to meet him because he knew how much I really wanted to meet him. I, I was just so ecstatic. Oh, It was so good. Before I go into my experience with meeting him though I will just give you the rundown from when we got there to how we actually met him. So we heard that he was only in a very short window, it was something like he was arriving at, at 9.30 or 10, it was something really small and then he was going to be leaving at 1. So we went on the Saturday and we specifically chose the Saturday because originally David Harbour was only meant to be coming to the con on Saturday. It was only something like three days before the con or four days before the con that they announced he would be there on the Friday and Sunday as well. Keep that in mind, it's going to come up later. So anyway, he had a really short window of time and this wasn't anywhere when we purchased the tickets. I didn't see this on their website. I couldn't find this information of when he would be there. It was only through a friend who happened to see it. I think they might have shared it to their Facebook page and they sent me the timetabling like that. If it wasn't for this friend, I would have had no idea when he was coming and I honestly would have just assumed he would be there for the whole day. Um, I'm not someone who's used to buying tickets to meet guests at con. Normally I just see if they're free 
and I go up, but because this is someone that I really, really cared about, we made sure to get tickets ahead of time. Again, he was only meant to be coming from like half nine, ten, leaving at one, so it's a very short window of time to meet him. And obviously, knowing David Harbour is going to be there, of course, a hundred people are going to flock to this building to try and find him because he's he's a big actor, he's a big celebrity, so like it makes sense, and I feel like they should have kind of been prepared for that. Anyway, we get to the con. It's about like half nine when we actually walk through the doors of the con and I have the diamond pass printed out. I print out all my tickets so I had it printed in my hand and I went to one of the stewards and I showed them it and I said hi where do I go for this and she just went I've got no idea so we we just went in um so we were like okay maybe like she was just on the door she didn't know because like it, I guess if you're on the door all day you might not necessarily know where anything is so I see another steward and I go up to her and I show her again on the paper hi do you know where I go for this this lady that I asked just went yes and just smiled at me like that with no further instruction so I was like okay so where do I go and she went and then she turned around and she walked off so <laughs> not not a great interaction and i was really kind of confused because i was like was that a joke what was that don't really understand anyway i'm just excited to meet david harbour so we go upstairs where she said where she pointed may i add she didn't even say she just pointed upstairs so we see this massive queue of people and we assume that that must be for David Harbour because he's like the biggest, one of the biggest guests there. We couldn't tell where this queue started and end because it just looked like a horde of people smushed in the corner. So I go to another steward and I say, hi, where do I go for David Harbour? And I, I'm holding again, I'm holding the diamond pass, holding the paper because I haven't collected it at this point, holding the paper to him. He goes, oh, David Harbour's over there. Wait a minute, what are you holding? I'm like, oh, it's the diamond pass. He went, oh, why are you up here? The diamond pass is downstairs. I know this sounds so small, but I can't even begin to explain how packed this place was. So just going up and down the stairs was not an easy task. There were so many people crowded everywhere. It was so, so hectic and so unpleasant to go through all of these people. But anyway, we go downstairs, we still can't find it. So then in the end, we see people going through like the exit and then one of the security guards just, we asked him again, he just pointed in the direction. And now by this point I'm fed up because no, none of them are actually telling me anything other than the one upstairs who told me it was actually downstairs. So this other one's just pointing. I just go through the exit because that's where he pointed. There was security there. And then I see loads of people in a queue on the side and luckily I see my friend so I asked him I was like Kian please tell me this is where the diamond passes are and he was like yeah this is where they are so finally we find we find the place we get the diamond pass printed and now it's like maybe 10 maybe a little bit past 10 like it, it was just taking a really long time and I'm panicking at this point because I'm worried he's gonna go like I know that like they end at this certain time so I wanted to be not in this queue for this diamond pass which took forever as well I wanted to be in the queue like for him maybe by like 10 20 this whole queue ends we get the diamond pass the diamond pass is this butchered <laughs> this butchered thing. This is the dog tag, the collectible dog tag that they, that is included as a limited edition part of the price that you pay for the diamond pass. So this is it. They put the hole punch for, this was like a solid card and then they hole punch it. So she hole punched it like on his head. And then the idea is every time you do something, they take one away. So when I had my photograph, they took one away here. When they had the autograph, they like hole punched it again. You'll notice that there's one here that hasn't been redeemed and I'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, after this, we're like, fine, let's go back upstairs. Let's go back to the photo thing. And they, they just don't give me a straight answer of anything. And I'm talking to them. They're not looking at me. I'm asking them questions, they're looking over there, 
it was so frustrating. I am not someone that gets angry easily, like you have to do a lot to piss me off, but when I'm speaking to someone and they're just like huffing and puffing and like turning their back to me, it's really frustrating, especially like when you're there and there's a time limit and I get like I get these staff are tired I get that they're tired, but there is no reason to be rude to people. So They're just all turning around Not really paying attention to us. I Don't know where to go. I don't know where anything is. I've never been to this con before so I don't know how it works when I tell you I felt like they were making me feel like I had done something bad and it was really, really kind of hard to deal with. I didn't say this to my friends at the time because like, I don't want to take away from the day, but like the way I was being treated for just asking where things was, they made me feel like so, so like much of a burden to them um, that it, it actually really upset me. So I was, I was really like annoyed with this, but like it was more like I was upset. I would say upset is the word more than annoyed because I was like, have I upset them? Are they okay? Like, have I hurt their feelings by asking this question? Even though I'm entitled to ask these questions, I felt really, really bad for asking them because I didn't want to be rude to them. I didn't want to upset them. The way they were just turning around as I'm talking to them made me feel like I had upset them. But anyway, somehow they just kind of pull us into the queue and then with that, and then David Harbour's there. So, You've got to understand, like, this is, like, one of my idols, right? He's there, in the room, in front of me. Darren had a photo pass, so the the way we did this is, because this comes with a photo as well, I wanted Darren to be in my photo, so we asked if, like, we could combine his photo pass and my diamond pass to, like, be in the picture together, which they were really nice about, like, they just let us do that. So when I tell you it was conveyor belt, conveyor belt, literally he was there like in one position one person would come he'd go and then this it wasn't his fault the staff were like okay next person next person so this was just happening and it felt like too many people in this one place it i understand because he has to leave at a certain time if if, if you don't know david hub is actually in a play at the west end at the moment which is why he had to leave at this specific time so they were obviously trying to kind of like condense it down he was lovely though like he saw us waiting in the queue like in our joyce and hufflepuff cosplays and he really liked them and then when we met him like for the few seconds that it was he was like oh i really love this joyce and hop and then he grabbed us and then we we, could, we took a picture with him and it was really really good but yeah um so he was so friendly to us and yeah he liked our costumes and I was really happy to have met him. Because we had like paid for two pictures because one was a diamond pass and one was a photo pass they were really nice in letting us take two pictures. The lady that was organizing the queue even was like no no they get two because they tried to like push us on quickly and she was like no no they get two. It was quite a hard environment to like speak up in so it was nice that like she remembered so you know kudos to that lady for managing David Harbour's photo queue on the Saturday of the con that is an impossible job. The only thing is where we had two pictures we could have if we thought about it more changed up the pose because obviously like we would end up with two of the same picture so like there was no time to like prepare for the picture it was literally like you stand next to him the minute you look at the camera they've taken the picture so there was no like organizing it and like theming it because like some people at these places they like to like do their own thing or like for example like with um joseph quinn a lot of people were doing like his pose um but obviously like that couldn't be done for this one which was fine but it would have just been nice to have like 10 seconds between the photo just to kind of like think about what you're doing so we come out then we hear rumors he's leaving early he's leaving early he's leaving early so we've just met him he was amazing might i add like he, he was he was so nice um but we hear people outside going he's gonna leave early he's gonna leave early so i was like surely not like if they've announced that he's leaving at one he should surely leave at one so we see kian again my friend from earlier and he's like let's go over to his signing table because they're gonna do the signatures really quickly and then he has to leave so we all rushed there was like about like five of us at this point five six of us at this point we're all rushing to find his photo table we couldn't find it eventually we found it and 
we wait in this queue. Queue is not a word I would use to describe this, it was just a pit of people. So <laughs> we were waiting here, there was no queuing system, there was no anything, there was no understanding of what was going on with this con so like we were just all waiting to see when he would come and they didn't give us kind of any any indication of that eventually he came and like loads of people started taking pictures of him but then we start to get worried because we hear we're only gonna do enough batches that we have the time for. I don't know how many batches there were, like I thought I was in one of the later batches but it turns out there was like 10 or something batches or like 14, like it was some crazy number. A batch is basically the batch of diamond passes. So on this ticket, I don't know if you can see, I was batch three, which is one of the earliest batches, but I thought, I really thought that like three was so late because some people in front of me had two, like there was obviously one, so I was like, oh my god, like three must be the latest. Then I hear someone say four, and then I hear someone say five, so it made me feel a bit better to know that I wasn't right at the end. The tickets were so expensive to meet him, so we're waiting, they call up batch one, they call up batch two. There was a lovely mother and son who began talking to us, saying how they had no information about when David Harbour was taking the pictures and they tried to ask and no one told them and the son accidentally missed his picture with him. And this is a problem because I feel like if you're charging this extortionate amount of money to meet a guest, at least send people the timetable, at least email it, like at least do, put it somewhere, put it prominently somewhere, not hidden in the corner. Literally at the con, the timetable was like behind this other thing. So. You, you wouldn't even look for it like if you've never been to a con before i'd never been to this specific one before i never knew how timetabling works if i didn't know from my friends telling me look out for the timetabling sheet i would have completely missed it so it's really understandable and i think they really need to make it more accessible to people that aren't used to cons because you know it, w it was a mother and her son she had bought this ticket for her son for his birthday present she's not gonna know that that's what you do he's not gonna know he's like 14 like i feel like there just needs to be some guidance there especially as they were telling us how they were asking and being told different things and then it eventually resulted in them missing it which i can totally like resonate with because that's almost imagine if we came a little bit later like that could have been us luckily it wasn't but you know like i completely understand also i feel like it's really important to add this mother and this son had never been to any cons before this was their first ever one and they were asking us is this normal we were telling them no this is entirely abnormal they also brought up the fact that apparently i i didn't see this but apparently on the email and on like the promo stuff for it it said ask the people in blue shirts if you need help and they said that they asked loads of different people in blue shirts for help and basically they were fobbed off each time uh, they weren't giving a straight answer they were given the runaround and that resulted in him missing out on meeting david harbour she's telling us about this the staff were screaming at people like to keep them in line but there, there wasn't a line like they were telling everyone to stay in a queue but it was just like a clump there was no real way they could have organized this i think if they really wanted it to be in a queue they needed to have like those rope things and have people queue that way but honestly i feel like it's just too much pressure on these stuff to queue like over 200 people because that's not gonna work <laughs> you can scream you can shout but if they're not moving you can't you can't move them yourself so after batch two was called out, batch three never actually got announced. There was a massive gap between batch two and batch three because they didn't announce that batch three people could go up to and get their autographs. After a while, I eventually had to like lean over through the crowd and show the woman that was at the front my pass. And then she went, oh, actually I forgot batch three can come as well. So yeah, they, they forgot that batch three could come as well. And we go, we meet him, literally like about 10 seconds with him. He signed, I have his resume. No one ever believes me when I tell them this, but I, I actually have his resume. This is his old, <laughs> this is his old headshot from when he started acting. And this is his resume that he left behind at one of his auditions. Um, and he signed it. 
he signed it. He was amazed that I had this. He literally was like, the first thing he said to me, he didn't see it properly at first because we had to slide them down. And he looked at it and then he looked at it again and he was like, where did you even get this? <laughs> and he was laughing and he was really embarrassed. And he said, oh, I was young and handsome once. And he was really friendly, like, he was, he was lovely, he was trying to make the most, I have, like, I really don't want this to come across like it was his fault, because it's completely not, like, he was making the most with the time he was given, and there's not really much more he can do, he's trying his best, so, you know, like, kudos to him, he was doing really well. Once this was over, we came out, and we looked back at the queue, and literally, there was, like, no white space on the floor, it was just jammed with people i'm so glad that ours was done early because i don't know if i would have actually been able to stay in that queue so now at this point me and darren were just like super tired from all of the running around our friends bless them they were waiting for us they were really really nice and supportive throughout the whole con i just went to quickly go and have dinner and now that i'm back i don't know where i put the lipstick i was wearing before so i'm wearing an entirely different color now but we move so with the diamond pass there is meant to be a gift that comes along with it and we were told once we once we had our signing and the picture taken they just told us that it would be downstairs and it wasn't through the stewards either because they didn't know it was through other people in the crowd so we go downstairs we don't exactly know where it is um and we see this snake long queue of people and it literally almost went around the entire bottom half of the Olympia so it was a it was a really big queue and it looked like it would be an hour maybe more if I was to wait in this queue so I'm assuming surely to just pick up a gift it can't be this queue there's a boy who is herding people into this line I say to him hi where do I get the gift for David Harbour Diamond Pass and he just went oh it's gonna be in this really long queue I'm afraid and I looked at the queue and everyone in the queue was holding things in their hands and it it wasn't anything that I was given it didn't look like it was the free gift it looked like they were waiting to get things signed or something it did it just looked a bit weird to me so I was like are you sure because they're all holding something um, and I don't have anything like that and he just went yeah if you want your free gift you're gonna have to wait in this enormously long queue I'm assuming so where he said I'm assuming it makes me think he doesn't know just because from before all of these other stewards didn't know where things were and they were all saying different things so I thought let me this time go and check with someone else before I wait in this queue and lose like half the day so luckily I checked with another girl and she was like no it's just over here like follow me and she took me to it so after she pointed me in the right direction they told me that they were run out of these um gifts and to come back later because they were apparently getting a delivery in of these gifts on the day of the con we that's that's a whole other thing in itself so we go we have lunch and then the prices of the lunch were extortionate but i don't think this is as much of a problem with the con as it is with the venue so the con doesn't own the little concession shops that's not part of the con they're there all the time anyway so if that convention hall was being used for anything else the same little shops would be there and they would most likely probably be the same price too it was ridiculous like they were extremely overpriced like the price of one salmon and cream cheese bagel two bottled drinks and a yogurt came to over 15 pounds and I only got it because I had no other food on me I was really hungry and I just couldn't be bothered to go traipsing around and find more my friend got a regular coffee and it was literally like almost the size of an espresso so this however is not really something I'm that fussed about and now like I know people are gonna like not understand that but here is the thing as someone who's been going to cons like pretty much most of my life at this point there comes a time where you have to expect this sort of thing every single comic con the food is going to be expensive do i like the price no clearly not do i want to pay that much for like a tiny sandwich no clearly not but it comes to a point where if you don't want to pay that you just kind of have to bring your own food because a it's london like london's expensive anyway and b like it's a convention center hall. There is, that's just how it is. This isn't something that the con can control because those concessions are not owned by London Film and Comic Con, they're owned by the venue. But I don't believe blaming the entire con 
for the prices of the pre-existing concession shops is really correct. Anyway, once we come back, they're still run out of the poster and at this point they have like a piece of paper. It was literally a random piece of paper and you put your name and address on it and then they've promised to send it. Do I think this it's a poster, by the way, this was the magical gift. Do I think that this poster is gonna arrive? My expectations are really low, I really doubt it. I wholeheartedly doubt that any of us are gonna get the poster. Now, on one hand, it is just a poster, yes. Like, it's probably, it's probably not worth that much. It doesn't really matter. In my opinion, if they advertise that a poster comes with this diamond pass, they should have the same amount of posters as diamond passes sold. Which leads me on to my next point, the overselling. So originally this con was only meant to be David Harbour coming on the Saturday. So that's why myself and many others rushed to buy these Saturday tickets. Like I said previously, a couple of days, a few days before the con, magically, there's now a Friday diamond pass and a Sunday diamond pass. Now, I've heard rumours of overselling, like it's very clear to see that they did oversell the con. It was packed like sardines, you couldn't move, you couldn't do anything, crazy packed, like crazy 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 packed, insanely crazily packed. Working and counting the tickets and counting the space, but clearly they oversold this con, there was no space to move in some parts of it. Once David Harbour went home, it did get a little bit better, but it was still extremely packed. Personally, and now this is just my theory, I could be wrong, so please just take what I say with a pinch of salt. I reckon that they booked David Harbour for Saturday, he had these really tight restrictions of the time he could come, and instead of just selling enough tickets to fit that timing, they oversold for the Saturday, which is why it was such a conveyor belt system, because Funnily enough, meeting these guests at the cons like this, I've never seen anything like it, even though like I've only booked it twice. I have met guests at cons before just by going up to them, and it's never, ever been like that. I think that they just didn't know what to do and panicked, so they've oversold the Saturday as it was, and then instead of just leaving it there, they also added this Friday and Sunday, which is where I think the confusion with the presents came, the gifts, so I think they must have ordered enough posters for how many passes they had for Saturday, but then just gave them all out on the Friday, because they didn't expect it to be like that on the next day. So David Harbour was really full, so many people missed their opportunity to actually get their photo with him, like what they paid for, so many people, like in the queue, so many people all around us, oh yeah I missed him by two minutes, I missed him by five minutes, I came and I didn't know where to go and they sent me in the wrong direction so I missed him, like this shouldn't be happening at a con. I get that it's hectic and I get that it's hot, but by Saturday you've already had the Friday to understand where everything is. And then I feel like if there was problems on the Friday, which probably there was, they need to brief their staff for the Saturday. The staff not knowing where things are is not the staff's fault, it's whoever's in charge of management, because if you don't tell them, how are they going to know? It's impossible. If, if they're not properly briefed, they're not going to know, and then it makes them look bad and then what I've seen is like loads of people are blaming them. It's not entirely their fault, like if they're not being briefed, what what can they really do? So as I was at this con, I was posting about it on my Instagram story and I actually had some people during the con and then after the con message me to say, has it been packed for you? What is it like? I booked a photo with such and such person, I didn't get to meet them, I did this, it didn't work. And it was so many, all of the group chats, like all of the Comic Con group chats that I'm in were just filled with people like complaining about this con. Even throughout the con, like I saw about three different people crying, which I feel says a lot, like why, why should people be crying at the con? There comes a time where like I think companies need to kind of put their greed aside because when it's becoming packed like that where people can't move, it becomes very dangerous in the heat as well, it becomes very dangerous. People can have heat stroke, people can pass out, it's not, it's not good. 
and I don't know like how many health and safety things were breached on this day but I'm sure probably a few I think they needed to all be briefed a properly and b with the same information because it was clear that some were more in the loop than others were so after I saw people are messaging me about their experience with this con I decided to put up a proper story to say like hey if you've had any of these experiences let me know because I wanted to make this video and I wanted to shed light on the subject. Now when I posted this, instantly one of the employees from London Film and Comic Con DM'd me to tell me that like it was a bad move and I shouldn't be, their words were I shouldn't be looking for problems. I'm not looking for problems, there, there are problems all around, like this is what bothers me because if there's a problem, myself, other people, anyone who's there, are entitled to speak about it. You're entitled to review your experience and you're entitled to say what happened. Silencing people and telling them not to do things and not to say anything and not to share their experiences is just not right in my opinion because you're allowed to not say what happened to you. That's within your right. You're allowed to say that, you know, you think that everyone complaining about it is stupid because that's your right but it's also my right to disagree with that and it's also other people's right to say hey actually I didn't really like when this thing happened so when I got this DM I was kind of annoyed because I was like why would you send me this like that's so random but also looking at it I kind of feel sorry for this person because working at this really high intensity con they must have so many like angry customers and so many like pissed off customers because obviously it was unorganized but also it's hot like also like in any kind of role you work like this you're always going to have customers that cause you trouble for no reason so these volunteers are probably on such high alert that anything to do with the con might I don't want to use the word but like it might trigger them into feeling like they have to attack or they have to like pounce and respond and like cover themselves and to have your workers feeling this way it's just not right because you know looking back you know I, I, I understand where she's coming from now you know it makes perfect sense all of this stuff is happening and it can feel very personal and it can feel very stressful which is why I don't understand why these workers are volunteers the people that work for London Film and Comic Con are not working for money they're all volunteers this show must make so much money that I feel like they need to be paid at least minimum wage I mean obviously they need to be paid more but like they, they need to be paid something the way in which these staff members were worked and worked and just constantly worked was really disgusting I think big companies like this need to actually pay their staff and not just expect volunteers to do everything for them because on top of all of this the ones like I mentioned that were rude they could also be thinking well I'm not being paid you know do what I want and maybe like an incentive of some kind of payment and a proper briefing would help them to just understand what they're doing a little bit better but the next thing I wanted to talk about is to do with the volunteers and that is the notion that because they're volunteers you can't say or do anything even though they're volunteering and even though they're not getting paid they still voluntarily signed up to do this job at the London Film and Comic Con there was lots of them there that clearly didn't want to be there there was lots of them there that clearly didn't like the con as they were saying in passing and the vibe they got like the the lady that was rude to me some people got pushed and shoved by this I say the security by the stewards like by the the staff members but I can say as someone who's actually worked in customer service and has worked public facing front facing jobs there is a way that you conduct yourself when you're doing these jobs and being sarcastic and being rude and just turning your back to people and ignoring people is not people were being pushed by them and manhandled by them just because you are a volunteer it doesn't give you the right to be mean to people and it doesn't give you the right to manhandle and put your hands on people that was also something i was told about as well 
some of the other things these workers were doing, and I'll, I'll read you a list that people have sent to me. One of the things staff were doing is they were guarding the disabled toilet and not letting anyone in who didn't look disabled. Now I saw staff at the disabled toilet standing there, but I didn't know that, that I didn't know that that's what they were doing. Like th this is the thing. Like not every disabled person is gonna have like a really stereotypical look to them. Not everyone is going to be visibly disabled. It, you can't just say that someone's not disabled because they don't look a certain way like I don't understand what that's about another thing that I got sent is they were ignoring questions on disabilities apparently way before the con someone messaged the London Film and Comic Con email with a question regarding their disability and just no one got back to them but they were posting on all of their platforms so there was staff screaming in attendees faces now I witnessed this as well they got up in their faces and they were screaming <laughs> Staff manhandling the attendees. People waiting over one and a half hours for diamond passes. Now, I didn't actually see them doing this, but apparently they were capping queues. But also while they were capping the queue, they were promising people autographs and photos and then obviously not being able to deliver on them. So on the screen now, I'm going to show you pictures for, that people got while at the con. So. At this con, you could pay and you can go and get your picture taken with the stock. And they put these pictures online, which you have to pay for on top of the already really expensive price. Um, you can see how most people have like maybe 200. Um, some of them have like 500. You can see, however, that Joseph Quinn, just on the Saturday, on the blue set, had 1,000... <laughs> 1,339 images and you can see how on the upside down set he had 675 images so just on the Saturday he had over 2,000 images that is so much for one person the most other one here is I think David Harbour David Harbour had 953 which is still a lot but it's nowhere near 2,000 I cannot believe like and David Harbour was only there for the morning. Imagine if he stayed all day. Just imagine if he stayed all day. I think that they just realised they could make a killing off of this con and did just that. <sighs> so I just counted it and Joseph Quinn took 3,164 photos the whole of the con. He was only there on the Saturday and the Sunday. That is a lot. People didn't even take that like I've never seen that. In total, David Harbour took 1,944 photos. He was only there for a few hours per day. They really churned them out. Honestly, the actors kept it together really well, but you could see like Joseph Quinn just looked so, so done. And he looked really sad. Like some of the things that happened to Joseph Quinn is allegedly he had no breaks. Now someone told me this and I was like, how did you know you had no breaks? And apparently they asked him when he was going for his break and he said he doesn't get a break, <laughs> which is illegal. Also some stupid worker told him to shut the fuck up, boyo, and do as you're told. And apparently this happened because he was talking to his fan. I don't feel I need to explain like what the problem with that one is. Also for Joseph Quinn, someone said that they went over to him and as soon as they got there, the staff just said, just take the photo and move on, which is incredibly rude. Um, another thing, someone else was upset because they said the staff member asked for batch eight to put their hands up for David Harbour and then said, shit, there's a lot of you. And then someone behind her was talking to her. So she was talking back and then turned around and the guy narrowed his eyes at her and rudely in front of everyone said, you can put your hand down now, like super rudely. Apparently she also saw the same people pushing people around, like them in lines and manhandling them, which this isn't the first person to say this like before, like I've seen a lot of people say the same thing. And they were also shouting at people in the queue saying, move, move, move into the corners, take the photo and go. Now, please remember what I say. This is just what's come through my messages and I'm, I'm just reading, I'm just telling you about them. But someone got him this gift and they made him something and they wanted to give it to him and like see his reaction and 
they weren't allowed to give it to him they had to put it in a box which is something that I've seen echoed about on TikTok so I'm sure that this happened apparently they just put it in the box and then they told him about it when they went up to him and finally met him and um, he was asking them about this thing that they made and they were saying yeah like I had to put it in this box over there so it's it's now in this box but he was upset and like he wanted to see it and he said he'd look out for it and then he went to look in the box and then the staff told him off there was a lot of shouting at joseph quinn is what i've just gathered from this con someone else said that while they were waiting for joseph there was someone in front who was taking the picture with them and the staff member pushed them into joseph and this other person so much so that she basically fell into him and she was apologizing even though it was this staff that's trying to hurry everyone along again like why staff are touching people is beyond me they're not security guards security guards don't even touch people why these volunteers feel that they can just put their hands on anyone without their consent is beyond me um but it's it's dangerous like shoving people like this in a big crowded hot place is just is simply dangerous what if someone turned around and like lobbed a punch back what if a fight broke out you can't do anything it's awful one of the biggest things throughout this con is the comment that i mentioned earlier of the member of staff shouting at joseph quinn and swearing at him there have been so many reports about this happening also with this diamond pass you were meant to get the opportunity to buy two extra autographs if you so desire however anyone who actually asked for these were denied them even though it's stated in the email and on the website that that's what you can get Joseph Quinn actually cried on stage as well because he was overwhelmed by the fans' appreciation. Hi, um, mine's not really a question. Um, it's just more of an extension of gratitude, really. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have heard what happened yesterday, whether it's true or not, um, about how you were treated. Um, I won't really comment on it, but I just wanted to say thank you from all of us. We're really grateful that you're sharing your time. Now there was also this video that emerged where people are saying the LFCC staff are pushing people and forcing them through. Um, personally, I couldn't really see it as that, it just looks like she's guiding them in. It's in this clip now, the girl with the red shirt, that is the LFCC member. Um, you, she's definitely putting her hands on them, which I guess she shouldn't be doing, but it doesn't really look like she's pushing them. What do you think? For context also, I haven't sped this video up. This is actually the speed that they were going in. So after I filmed this video, so many other things have happened to do with this. One of them being LFCC did actually release a public statement in regards to all of the allegations against their treatment of Joseph Quim. To save you the time of reading it, they basically just called everybody a liar and they're in the right and they're the victim and we should all feel sorry for them, is, is basically what it means. I commented on that post and my comment got deleted. Lots of my friends commented on that post as well. Their comments also got deleted. Furthermore, if you keep commenting, they block you. If you post any kind of video evidence because on their post in the comments they say oh if you have evidence of anything like this please show it to us people will post their videos as evidence and then they're blocked and the comments are deleted and this is just a cycle now i 
understand that LFCC are panicking. However, they are just digging a deeper and deeper hole for themselves at this point. I think they just need to own up to the fact that they did something wrong. Joseph Quinn was also meant to be going to a con in Germany. However, he mysteriously cancelled his appearance at that con and it was said to be because he had issues with his passport. However, a fan met him in central London and confirmed that he was actually just feeling overwhelmed and he couldn't hack another one of the cons. I really don't know how to round this video off, but I think it's really clear to see that Showmasters saw two very, very popular and desirable actors. They know that they already have a massive fan base. So instead of just booking them and selling tickets as normal, they overbooked them because they knew that hundreds and hundreds of people would flock to their convention to buy the tickets for them. It's clear to see that LFCC did make a killing on this event and of course the actors did too but at what cost? Especially for Joseph Quinn as this was his first con, that is a very very overwhelming and over the top experience for a first comic con and this could be really detrimental to him and other newer actors going to cons like this. If this is his first impression and he doesn't understand comic cons that well and thinks that they're all like this, then will this make him not want to go to any others in the future? Will this hinder him in other ways? It's really upsetting because cons are meant to be like a really nice place to chill and it's really sad that his experience and a lot of his fans experience were ruined by the staff and the organisation at LFCC. Personally, I think if you have these guests with these very specific time slots and very specific requirements, no matter how big they are, you just either need to sell limited tickets, even if that means putting the prices up, you're still limiting the tickets so it's not becoming a dangerous situation. If you can't do that, then simply just do not have these guests at your cons if you can't handle them. I'm very surprised at Showmasters because they're quite a big company. This is very notorious of a con. Um, I'm really upset that they did this. However, I feel like they should just listen to some fans' advice, maybe reflect on this and just come back from it. I think they just need to really own up to their mistakes. They're too scared to admit when they've done wrong and I don't understand why so many people would have a much better reaction if they just put out an apology instead of just a defence mechanism post. A final note on the volunteers at LFCC. This video is not meant to bash on the volunteers in any way, shape or form. They are volunteering and they are doing their jobs. However, it does go without saying that you need to be polite and you need to have a level of professionalism about you when you are working at these events. However, with volunteers, they have a lot more free roaming and they don't have as much guidelines to follow. So maybe this is why LFCCs opt to choose volunteers because they know they can get away with a lot more. Some of the volunteers were really good though. It's just very sad that they got overshadowed by the mass majority. And there were so many more things that happened that I just can't fit into this video. So if you have more, please just put them in the comments below and I'll try and like look at all of them and respond to all of them. If you were at the con, let me know what happened as well. Please give this video a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel because it helps me out a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next hopefully happier video. Bye!